What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday. I've got my good friend, Captain Jeff Malone from the docks of Hawks K. He's on. We're going to talk about reeling against the drag. No guide likes to hear that going on. Jeff, what do you tell your what do you tell your customers about reeling against the drag? How do you how do you teach them how to fight a fish properly? Well, I try to just explain that the fish needs to fight against the drag and against the rod. So often when I see someone reeling against the drag, I know that they're also exerting too much energy and gaining absolutely nothing. So, you know, I I preach to them that, you know, lift up slow, reel down quickly. That way you're trying not to pull line off of the reel as you're lifting. Cause if you, as you know, the fish is going away from you. You can lift to a point where you're just lifting and reeling and all you're doing is pulling line off, reeling it on, pulling it off, reeling it on, as you know. Mm-hmm. So I try to ex- explain to them that allow the fish to run. He's allowed to run. I mean, we have buoys on our anchor systems. He's not going to take all your line. I got plenty of horsepower that says there's no way he's going to take it all. We'll chase him down with the boat if, we, if that's necessary. Uh, and there's a lot of line. You know, I, I think sometimes uh, people are under this misconception that they're going to be able to just reel them in. Right. Well, it, first of all, we got to get them tired before he ever allows that to happen. So with the proper drag setting, which is part of my job, is to make sure the drag is set to a manner that he was going to stop and get tired of pulling against that that tension just takes a minute. You don't just reel them in. You don't reel a 25 pound jack in on 10 pound or 15 pound line in five minutes. You have to fight the fish. So I think some people just aren't familiar with fighting fish or fighting fish techniques because they were brought up in a pond where you reel in a brim. You don't fight them. You don't let him pull drag. You don't wear them out. You flip them up on the shore and that's the end of it. So, um, trying to explain how the drag works and how we can adjust the tension with the drag knob on the top of the reel so that we can loosen it or tighten it. Um, personally, I like to set it to, um, you know, a certain setting. Then if I want to add additional pressure personally, all what I would refer to as palm the spool, I put my hand on it to give them a little bit of extra pressure where by trying to tighten the knob, you can't let go fast enough. You can't react to the knob fast enough. So I don't, I like to set it somewhere where the fish, there's ample tension. And if I want to add extra, I'll palm it with the palm of my hand. And with some of my more experienced anglers and customers, I've taught them those techniques uh, because they need to know how to apply a little more pressure to close the deal quicker. Um, but I think it's important for people to not be reeling against a drag most importantly, because it's not helping their cause or their case and fighting the fish at all. Uh, let the rod w- do all of its job. The, the reel essentially is just simply a line retriever. That's its job is to retrieve the line. Now it also, of course, it puts pressure with the drag, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, too often they get used as a winch. Mm. I've had reel handles literally broken off where they're torquing and straining on the reel handle so hard they literally break the reel handle off the rod like this is a i don't even know how you put that much torque and tension on a spinning reel really i don't don't even know but i try to teach that you know you use the rod for lifting and if you need to use both hands to lift use both hands because you're never going to be reeling and lifting at the same time you're either lifting or reeling but you're not lifting and reeling so I try to explain that so that people start to understand that, oh, that makes sense. And I say lift slow, real fast, because, again, if you lift too quickly, Mm -hmm. you're just pulling line off the reel that there again, you have to reel back on there again. So a lot of times in the case of fighting some of these larger fish, it may be a stalemate and you might be losing line for sometimes periods of time. So as long as the line stays taut and you keep the line tight. In theory, you should stay on there until you catch them. It, but I ought to often see folks try to real quick catch them or reeling against the drag while the fish is running away. And you're just wearing yourself out, stressing out the line. So I think that it's really important to not reel against the drag and understand that it's just time and pressure. I mean, put the heat on them, what I have set for you. And if it's not enough, I'll tighten it a little bit if that's what's necessary, or we'll chase them after them with the boat, but reeling against the drag uh, is a challenge. And 
the one time I give the customers credits when you got an issue with a drag clickers gone out and they don't know they're reeling against the drag because mm-hmm. you, you right. can't hear it. You no, know? the drag clickers are important because then you know the line's going out. But you know, naturally, those of us that do it a lot can just look down and simply see the spool is spinning and not to reel against it. But for an inexperienced angler, you know, look at the reel when you're fighting them and see what's happening there. Learn about what's going on there so that you can better fight the fish. It's going to be a more enjoyable experience for you and allow you to catch more fish um, because the equipment's not compromised. For sure. It seems like you've gone over that speech a lot of times. <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, that's, you know, I mean, that is kind of the thing though. When, when you get somebody that has never caught a fish that fights the way that just an average fish fights in the Florida Keys, not even a, not even a giant, like just a, you take a three pound Jack Cravel, a three pound Jack Cravel is going to pull some drag. And it, you know, if, if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. But it, right. you know, when we were fishing with mono, only and before even before braid existed when you reeled against the drag you would really 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 spin up the line the line would spin up and then you would have this problem where if they drop the rod too fast it, and created slack that slack would spin up around the tip and then the then the fish would pull and it would snap the fish off i saw that happen a lot of times so then you're really super careful about like no 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 don't reel against the drag because you don't want to spin that line up and then after that the line's really hard to fish with. Right. I mean, you could drag. That's it true. No, that's boat. true. That's true. And I think though, to be honest with you, I think just because of the stretch of the monofilament, it's going to do it anyway. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I didn't really mention or necessarily reeling against the drag. When I catch these great big tarpons, I use mono. I like the stretch of the mono personally. Um, and you know, even with my most seasoned anglers after fighting a big tarpon for whatever it is, 30, 45 minutes, that line is twisted as heck. Mm-hmm. And not from reeling against a drag, just a pure stretch of pulling on that thing like that stretches it enough to where it twists real bad. And it can, you can get a tip wrap, which is what right. you're referring to and break them off. It's something that I am very always watching it. You mm-hmm. know, when I get a fish near the boat, I'm always watching that rod tip because it's so easy, particularly just a simple example would be shark fishing. You know, we got him up next to the boat. What do I do? Put the rod in the rod holder. Number one. That we don't lose the rod during the process of this whole landing procedure because naturally he's going to take off more than likely. That rod's on the deck, the rod's gone. Mm-hmm. So sticking the rod holder first. The next thing I do as I'm grabbing the leader is look at the rod tip because if it's twisted and he takes off, game over. And now he swims away with a big old rig in his face and the fish is gone. So, but that's something I'll, I do with every almost every fish. We get boat side, put the rod in the rod holder, which is where the rods belong, not on the deck. Second pet peeve of mine. <laughs> Then I look at the rod tip and make sure it's we're not tip wrapped with, with monofilament. And then I can go proceed doing what I'm doing with taking a picture of them or, you know, letting a customer maybe touch a shark or whatever the case is. Um, you know, but that's, that's important is watching that rod tip and making sure that it's not tip wrapped. Love it. All right. That's how to do it from Captain Jeff Malone at Hawks K. If you want to go fishing with Jeff Malone, how do you do it? Tarpentime.com. Tarpentime.com. That's how you do it. He's got two boats ready to go all year round. Call him up. He's awesome. All right, Jeff, thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Tom. Take it easy.